I wanted to do a detail of this, I jump into it. You're basically just noting the damn thing. I mean, like, like. But you can see right here, right? This is one wall, right? And so moving forward, making this section more accurate, you know, making it graphically more accurate without hiding line, lines and stuff, I'm going to have to break it into the two walls. And this is sort of the trans translation. Maybe I'll go to this side where it's one. Hold on. The translation from, oh, yeah. Yeah, I screwed this up. Hold on. This is where that shed, that dormer is. And so... For a while, it had to be two walls because of the way the design was, but now it's it's actually in line with it. So I should probably make that one wall, but whatever. Either way, you know, now I'm looking at this and starting to think about what do we do here? And so the options you have, sorry, I'm jumping around like crazy. So the options you have are, right, first, obviously, I, I can slice this wall, right? I'm going to do this live, even though it's going to flip everything, whatever. Um, so I can slice this wall, whatever method you want to use to slice it. Right, and then I'll pull this up to where it actually should be, which is you know, here. Oh, it's gonna freak out, isn't it? Sorry, this goes up to here, whatnot. Oh, come on. Try this again. Let's just split it twice. Okay, so anyway, so what we're talking about, right, is the gap between, hopefully I didn't mess anything crazy, the gap between here and here, right? There it is. <clears throat> oh, this is what I'm messing with because I, <laughs> I just I should have done the other side. I'm dealing with this detail here, which is probably I'm throwing errors all over the place. But whatever. Um. So so you know the way you build it is like this, right? It's 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 you build you know the the rim joists or whatever comes out to here. I have a double header because it's above this, so I'm you know sistering up the header up here. That's kind of what I was playing with recently. You've got your your plywood flooring. You can see I've already transitioned this flooring from a thick you know a thick item. To just the flooring and the, and the, then the beam systems and then drywall under here, right? So I've already kind of transitioned that, so I already have those layers. So I'm sort of building that over time. I didn't need to, right? I could leave it. I could definitely leave it like this, and you just clean this up in in your section, your one or two details, and that's more than good enough for pretty much ninety five percent of what you'll do, right? The, like in my opinion, that's that's the way it is, right? But by cleaning it up this way, I can cut sections and details everywhere. I can have a little more accurate idea of it. And so what you're talking about, Dave, is now how do we clean this up, right? And so, you know, the way for those who are following along on the in the community as well, to Dave's question, when we mean unlock it and pull it down, this is what we're talking about. So I'm in the wall, um, you know, in that wall type, right? And now I change this from floor plan to section. I'm going to go over to structure. And then what this allows me to do is it allows me to modify different pieces of this layer of this wall. You may have been in here before to throw in thicknesses, et cetera, you know, wraps, so on and so forth. But what you could do also is you can modify the layers of this. And so if I click modify, what I can do is I can select the bottom of this and I can unlock it and the bottom of this and unlock it. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, this is one method. I'm not saying this is the only method. So now when I do that, what you'll notice if I turn off thick lines is not only do I have a wall base, but now I have this, this guy here right? Which is just those two layers. So I can now take this and I can throw this down. And if I go to WT, you can see it's actually doing it. And so that'll get the job done. The problem is here, right? So sometimes it actually works, right? So if I slice these walls at the exact same height, turn in the corner, I pull this down, I do my thing, it may actually work. A lot of times it doesn't. A lot of times this join, this cleanup on this corner is extremely challenging, right? So what we'll do is we'll actually, okay, so now, Dave, if I take this, um, which you know, let's say I want it to be, you know, if I pull this down, should let me do, yeah. Pull this down. You could see like, and again, this isn't perfect, but 
it's it's trying to get it right and you might be able to join it and clean it up and so on and so forth and so i have done that before and that's a long long time ago that's how we did it because we didn't know we didn't think there's any other way and that i the concept of like two walls just wasn't in my mind um but now kind of the 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 sort of standard practice or honestly i see it in commercial too um is to separate the the structural so to speak um framing members whether it's cold form or metal it doesn't matter and the the exterior from it. So for a long time we were doing brick, but now you can do, you know, siding and sheathing, I would say is probably. So then if you're doing that, you also have two options, right? You can technically, let me undo, you can do a wall just for that thin piece. So let me just, uh, I guess I'll leave that undone. So I'm going to duplicate this wall and just call it um, sheathing and siding, right? And then I'll move my plywood down, I'll move my air infiltration barrier down, and then I'll move my, I guess I can leave my finish outside, but then I'm gonna get rid of my structure and my interior layers. So now I just have a wall that's sheathing, air barrier, oh Jesus, and of course I selected a wall when I did it. Uh, new white place. Okay, and then you could just draw that one wall in between. So not always easy to draw that wall in between because you're going to get overlaps and stuff. You know, one little trick is to draw it outside and then adjust it. And so, um, what the hell did I call it again? Siding, sheathing and siding. Not a good naming convention. One tip like for stuff like that is, if you, especially if you have sections, is I just drew it outside of the wall. Um, you can see here it is here. And then I don't know why it's offset by three foot four and some change, whatever. So zero, zero. And then from here, you could either, I wouldn't say have a level, but here you can just pull this down and then maybe the top is locked to the first floor. Uh, top and straight, top offset. Oh, I guess we'll do a basement then. Whatever. Okay, so then we have the top go up to the first floor. And then we have the bottom offset for now, fine, whatever. And then you can do this. Although, let me see, is that, did I draw it the right way? Probably not. Oh, I did, yeah. All right, so then you can do this. You can align this guy inside here. And then, you know, you can, however this wants to clean up, you can clean up. You're still gonna probably have to do some joins to make these lines go away. You might have to do, you know, join geometry and do wall here, wall here, wall here, wall here. But if I do this around the building, it's going to clean, right? And I might have to do aligning of the, you know, aligning of the siding. So align this, align that, align this, right? Whatever, and then it cleans up. Um, so that's another way, right? And so that you have a wall here, wall here, and wall in the middle, you have this ribbon. The other, you know, obviously now that ribbon's there, you have to move. And then the, the final way would be you detach it from this wall completely, right? And then this wall is only siding and studs. I mean, siding and studs, sorry, drywall and studs. And then this wall runs the whole facade, right? Which is, that's probably the closest to construction because then it's one, you know, exterior wall, blah, 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 good to go. What's nice about that too, is if you are trying to figure out square footage of whatever wall type, you know, exterior, um, instead of trying to rely on materials, you can rely on that wall because the interior is going to be a separate wall. And so the area of that is going to be pretty accurate to siding or sheathing. Right. Um, and so those are kind of the three approaches. I think they, they all kind of can work for you. Um, and, uh, and I think it's just a matter of what, what approach you want to do. And so, um, I might, because of the fact that I already have all these walls built, I might end up doing something more like this. Um, I don't know if I want to go and remove the siding and, and modify these walls, but I probably could. Um, the things that might happen when you do that through the process is if you have things like um, these are model in place right now. Um, you know, this is a split surface in there. Um, that kind of stuff might blow up because I'm deleting that face, right? Um, I also have bean systems where I hosted to the face of this, right? And so because of that, in this current project, I may do something more like this. Um, which will clean up my sections, right? So if I go here, you can see this section is pretty nice. There it's there. And then even if I jump into a higher level, that's what's so nice about it, right? If I wanted to do a detail of this, I jump into it. You're basically just noting the damn thing, 
I mean, like, like, but it also, you know, my biggest thing, forget about the ease of, of actual documenting. My biggest thing is how much it helps me with the construction side of it. Right. Like, like I saw here, you know, trying to figure out where I want this head, this window head to be, um, you know, and I wanted to try and get this as tight to the ceiling as possible. Um, how much room do I have? How much room do I not, you know, pull it down and so on and so forth. I'm also going to do resilient channels under this drywall. So I wanted to make sure I modeled that in for sound between them. It's the one thing I didn't do here that, that, that I want to do, especially when I'm going to be under, under the master bedroom. So when I'm doing BIM after dark live, I'm not waking my wife up. Um, and so, you know, pull it, pulling all that into there to sort of help you see it. But those are kind of the three. Oh, I just, I did the cardinal rule of structure. Don't do that. Hold on. <laughs> Get rid of this extension. Undo that. Undo that. Undo that. For those who don't know, the cardinal rule of structure is don't grab the, <laughs> don't grab the, the arrows, grab the dots. <laughs> and then, then make sure the arrows, the extension is not is set to zero. There we go. Okay. If you start grabbing arrows, you're just going to make yourself absolutely bonkers. There we go. Okay. So that's kind of the three approaches that I think everyone mentioned and the three approaches that, that I've taken. I mean, unless anyone has any other approaches they take, but is that helpful sort of the, mm. to give you a start? I mean, I, like I said, I've successfully done many projects with the unlocking and pulling the wall sheeting down. I have, right. But it does, you will get into conditions where that cleanup gets ugly. Right. And so yeah. if you go down that path, you just kind of force with when that ugly cleanup shows up, you have to, you have to clean it up in those views. Yeah, right. Yeah. But now, yeah. you know, future, you know, current me. Um, and of course I started that project with the different, with the older templates. So I was just using stuff. Current me would probably take the approach of stud drywall, stud and drywall uh, wall, and then sheathing siding wall. And then inside that too, you might have like a tile wall. So you may even have three walls for like a bathroom. And you know, the only downfall really to that is just remembering that you have three walls and then also um, having to join them. So actually I should say there is one more downfall to that, um, that, that you could run into is if I go back to my 3d. So when you have three walls and what I'll do is I'll, I'll do this in a new project. Cause it's gonna, this could be dangerous. <clears throat> so when you have a three wall system here, so if I do, let's say this is my stud, let's do interior, whatever. So, so let's say this is only studs on one side. We're going to pretend, and then we'll do a, uh, oops. And then we'll do a exterior insulated metal panel. And I'll just make this one. I'll get rid of the insides of this guy. So we're going to delete this. Nope. Delete this, delete this. Um, Oops. And then it's going to yell at you because you need a structural layer. So I'll just call that structure layer. Okay. <clears throat> so now if I have these two walls, right? And we assign, pretend that that's whatever. So, so now we have a two wall system here, right? And you put a window in it, all right? It's not going to cut the other one or let's do a door in a window, all right? Unless you join them, which is fine. So then you go, so then you say modify, join, and you join this to this. Okay, now it cuts them, right? The problem is depending on the window and the family, the case, the casement or the frame of however it's built into it does not adjust to the new thickness of the wall, right? So when you, when you, if I put this family in, let's, let's build a wall out here. That's a big fat single wall. So if I put this into a, uh, one of these guys, right. And I put this window in it, depending on the family, you may have framing or casement or Jesus. There is. So see how this, see how the interior trim comes in and out. Mm. The trim is currently buried in there because it's hosted to one wall, but cutting two. So you kind of, when you do this method, you have to either, you have to make your family, there's, a couple different approaches, right? Either you, you separate your trim from your window or in your window families, you have to have that trim not associated to the face of the window, but associated to a perimeter that then you can push and pull. 
And then unfortunately you'd have to make sure every window has the right thickness, total wall thickness as like its parameter, but, but you can do it right right now. What this is doing is this family and a lot of the window families and door families are using the face of the, the generic wall in the family item. So if I go into the family and I turn on uh, walls, right? They're wall hosted. So this, this object is hosted to the face of this generic wall. Right. And so when you bring that in, what that does is, and you can see even when I change the thickness in the family editor, if I change this to one foot, right, it pulls to it. So the only way to do that, to fix that would be instead of hosting it to this face, you'd want to host it to like a reference plane, which, you know, again, this may be kind of challenging for this one, but, and then, uh, let's see if I can get it. It's not going to move it out. Unlock you. Let's see if it lets me do it. I don't think it's gonna, yeah. So I'm gonna have to, so then you have a dimension that controls that instead of the wall. And so that's depends on what you do. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't mind the idea of the sliver because now you're not dealing with that either. Right. Mm. And so now you have mm. wall, wall, you're building it as it's built because you have a wall, you have a floor, you have rim board, you have sheathing or a, a subflooring, then you're sitting on top of it and then you're infilling with this. Or you modify all your window and door families for that exterior. Okay. Just pick and choose, pick and choose. Yeah, pretty cool though. I mean, it's a, mm. it's a common question that has honestly has three right answers really. 